screen. Okay, go ahead, uh, Jeff. All right, well, good morning, everybody. And welcome back. I hope, uh, I hope everybody had a good summer and uh, that uh, you're all healthy and, and staying away from the Delta variant. Um, <laughs> we're going on another tough situation with, with COVID, but uh, let's, let's hope we all make it through healthy. Um, I hope everybody's summer was very productive and enjoyable. And let's hope that we can enjoy it for a while longer that the weather will hold out. But uh, to no ado, welcome back to uh, our first uh, Zoom meeting uh, for a while. And uh, we're going to have a, a great meeting today. Um, first, uh, we're gonna have uh, David be covering uh, Apple and uh, iOS 15, what's, what we should expect to be announced on Wednesday, right? Wednesday? Yep, Tuesday. I think it is Wednesday. Oh, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. okay. And uh, following uh, David, we're going to have uh, Mike Potter uh, come and introduce uh, the Mac Stock uh, 2021. And David, David's got the T-shirt on right there. And uh, for those unfamiliar with Mac Stock, uh, Mike will bring us uh, all the information that we need to know. Uh, it's a great program that he usually puts together. So. Looking forward to hearing from Mike. And then following uh, the two of them, we're gonna have an early but extended uh, afterglow. So hopefully everybody could stay around and, and uh, join in the discussion, talk about what you did this summer, what you look forward to do this fall and uh, any issues or, or excitement about your Apple equipment. Uh, without that, let's turn it over to David. Thanks, Jeff, appreciate it. Um... Before we start, uh, I, I thought it would be, uh, it would be fitting that, uh, you know, it, today is September 11th, and it was 20 years ago today that uh, we lost many lives in, in, in America uh, from the terrorist attacks that occurred in New York City, uh, Washington, D.C., and then also in uh, Pennsylvania. I thought it'd be fitting that we, that we take a moment to give a moment of silence to, uh, to honor those that lost their lives uh, during that event, if we could. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, before I get started with what I was going to talk about today, I know there's been lots of questions about uh, the, stat the status of the club, where we are, what we're doing. So I, um, I just kind of wanted to go over what's been going on. First off, before I talk about myself and the elections and all that, um, we, we tried really hard to want to have some in-person or at least hybrid type meetings uh, this year. And we were hoping that uh, at least next month's meeting could be could do that, but just with the the way the Delta variant has been running rampant, it just it just didn't fit into the cards. And I don't think every anybody was going to be feel very comfortable being in, in person. As much as we we miss it so much, um, we we had decided we're going to stick with uh, this this uh, remote learning here with uh, with Zoom at, at at the time being. The plan is at some point we could do it hybrid, and hope hopefully next year we can uh, we, we can. Uh, pursue uh, that as well. So just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that it's very sad. I know we, we love, I love seeing all of you and uh, uh, you guys have been very supportive of this group uh, and I really appreciate uh, what you provide. So, but uh, as you know, I, I did announce that I am retiring as president. I will not be running it at a ter another, ter another term uh, after this, uh, after this uh, uh, year. Um, it was my time to step, step down. I want to spend more time with my family, my wife, and, and I want to work on other projects. So I spent 10 years uh, 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 with this, this club. And I've, I, I, I really think, uh, I really hope that you enjoyed and uh, enjoyed what I shared with my knowledge and all the th uh, things that I provided for the meeting and, and the SIGs and, and all that uh, over these years. And I look back and, and look at some of the things I did. I was like, why did I do that? That, that was, that there was just a lot of amazing things that uh, we did and we've done in this group uh, so, so far here. So 
Um, and I'm very proud of what I've accomplished, and I'm really proud of the, the, how I've led this group into uh, good things. We've, especially getting through this pandemic, this is probably one of the toughest things that any Apple user group has has had to, uh, to deal with is keeping people's act, keeping people um, active, keeping people interested um, in what uh, with with, with uh, being on Zoom. We've all learned Zoom really really quickly, <laughs> so it's. Uh, it's been something uh, uh, something they're going to that they're going to be doing here. So, we're going to continue to prov provide you some quality programs. Davis Knight does an amazing job uh, doing the, uh, the the programs, and we've got and that's that's other great thing about uh, having remote learning here and doing it in Zoom. We have we have uh, all these other presenters at our fingertips. We don't have to be dependent on somebody local where we can reach out to anybody around the world, uh, be able to do that. So. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty excited uh, what direction we're going to go uh, with this. So uh, and we'll see what happens. I'm 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 hoping for the best, but I'm not going to be I'm not going to be a stranger. I'm still going to stay a member. I'm going to still from time to time probably be asked to speak, and I have no problem doing that. It's just I wanted to step away and focus on you know, my family and other and other projects uh, uh, from this group. So I again I really appreciate. It. Everybody support hey, this. David, I, I would like to interrupt you for a second. Okay. I'd like everybody to unmute and thank David for 10 years of dedication and yes. service to the club. Uh, really, thank thank you. Thanks, you very David. much, David. We're here. Thanks, David. We're here. We're here. We're here. Thank you. All the work thank you've you. done. Great. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, you. David. Great job. Thank you, everybody. Great. I really appreciate that. That, yeah. that, that, that. that makes me feel real good. I. I, I I will miss you guys, but I I, I think this group this, I'm hoping that this group this group can continue to prosper and uh, and I'll do my best to to, to keep it that way. So, uh, and 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 helping along as we go here. So uh, now we got the board elections coming up uh, on October 23rd. We have some major decisions to make here. Now we have three officer openings currently. You have myself, the president. You have the vice president, and you have the treasurer. Uh, we are going to attempt to put together some sort of task force to see if we can um, uh, decide the best way uh, to do this and try to get folks to, to volunteer. I know many of you are, are just you're, maybe you're shy or you're, you're something you just not you just don't have the time to do, but it it, it is a it is a fun thing uh, to do uh, if if you have the time to do it. And uh, I think we have we a lot of us on the board as well as the officers have had a uh, had a great time. Uh, uh, of doing this, so um, and we, we want to keep this club going strong, but we need some fresh, we need some fresh eyes and some, you know, some fresh, fresh people to get some fresh ideas to help keep this club going strong. Um, but there's a challenge here. I mean, if we don't find these three officers, you have three key officers for this club to function. Um, so we're going to, we're at this. I'm not sure if this club can continue. Well, we need the leadership. So I, I reach out to all the members here, and I'm hoping others that listen that. Uh, if you know of anybody, if you if you're interested, if you want to to help lead this club, to, or even just be on the board, just be just be involved in trying to help this club go even further than it's than it has. I I I would I I would we're welcome you to reach out to me and uh, and let me know you're, if you're interested. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. Um, so uh, uh, the next board meeting is it's on September 28th. We have some again. We have some tough decisions to make. So if we don't have any offer, we don't have if we don't have any offer. We currently don't have any volunteers to want to step up in these positions. So we're going to definitely need to get get some folks uh, just to to come up and uh, and volunteer and uh, and let's let's keep this club going. This is a strong this is a strong club. Apple user groups are 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 struggling right now. Um, uh, in fact, I was uh, invited to. Uh, the Long Island uh, Mac user group last night uh, with Chuck Joyner and Jeff Gamage. Uh, Chuck was kind enough to invite me in to talk, uh, and we talked about the uh, M1 processors and such. They're they're a very small group. I mean, they only had about the 14 or 16 people that were in the meeting, but uh, a lot of great engagement. And and you know what the great thing about these groups are is the networking. Everybody loves to be able to talk. We we're all we're all among friends here, and I think. Uh, I, I, I saw that at that meeting last night, and I think it's just the struggles with every Apple user group. I mean, there's there's lots of them that have had their demise that they've just shut down because they just didn't have the leadership anymore or the people to help along with uh, keeping the club strong. So I just, I, I, I asked that if, if you know of anybody or if you know of anyone that wants to, to please, or if you're, if you're interested, please, uh, please uh, let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Um, so we're going to be working on that. So. 
So uh, with that, I, I'll open it up to any questions about wh where we're at the club. If you want to, to put in any, any of your thoughts on this, I, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. I know the board and all of the board members here here pretty would appreciate it as well. Any questions? Okay. Just a comment, Dave. The yes. board meeting is Monday, the 27th, right? 20, uh, I probably, probably thank you for, that's why we have you as secretary, uh, Susan. <laughs> it is the 27th. I said the wrong date. <laughs> I, I had it, I had it in my notes here and I, yes, it's Monday, September 27th. And anybody's welcome to, 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 okay. to attend. Um, and it usually ask, starts at seven o'clock. 7 PM on that September 27th. Um, I'll send I, I, anybody wants an, an invite, just let me know. And we'll be we'll happy to have you come on and, 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 and join. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Well, uh, well, let's see where we go and uh, let's let's hope for the best and uh, we'll, well you'll be hearing back from us and let, letting know where, where our direction is here so okay so let's uh, go ahead i'll move on and let's just talk about uh, some fun stuff here the uh, the apple event so first thing i'm going to talk about is uh, the apple event i've been talking about it quite a bit on my podcast and i've been on many podcasts uh, talking about this so it's kind of in my head quite a bit here for this last week and that's the pre-event, and then next week's going to be super busy because uh, we'll be doing a reaction time episode with, uh, I see Mike Potter is here, so we'll probably be doing an episode with him uh, next week. Uh, reacting as the things get announced, we always have a blast doing that, so uh, there's going to be a lot of exciting things here. So um, I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to just talk through this, and if anybody wants to see anything, you just let me know, but I, I think, uh, really, I think everybody pretty much knows that, that they're going to be announcing a new iPhone, okay? And um, the thing is, is this iPhone going to be even worth upgrading to? Well, it's going to be really entirely up to you as far as what type of uh, iPhone you currently have. Um, me, of course, you know, I'm going to be trading it in because I want to stay up on the latest model each year. I'm in the Apple uh, trading program. So I just, I guess I'm more or less, yeah, I, I am more or less renting my iPhone. So uh, <laughs> so I will, I will trade it in. Uh, they're really saying there really isn't much difference as far as physically difference that uh, that uh, in the iPhone 13 versus the iPhone uh, 12. Um, they are going to have all the models, I mean, including the mini. You know, if anybody is, is a fan of the mini because the mini is such a nice small phone, because some people really like small phones. Me, I like really big phones. I love the Max. I've had the Pro and the, the Max since since they've had uh, large size iPhones. I, I, I mean, going from the the six all the way up is when they first introduced the larger size phone. And I, I like it. Uh, I, I, I can sacrifice it being big and getting it in my pocket and it doesn't bother me so much. So, um, but they will be releasing four models, which is the mini uh, you're going to have the, 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 iPhone 13, which will be a six, probably a 6.1 inch. Again, this is all speculative, but pretty, pretty confident. Uh, and then the, the, the max will be a 6.7 inch screen and, it really sounds like the iPhone 12 lineup. So if you have an iPhone 12 and you're not one like to do any upgrades, it's probably not going to be in your interest to probably upgrade. You're probably going to be fine because the 12 is an awesome phone. I mean, even the 11 is a, is a good phone if you have the iPhone 11. So, um, and uh, they're going to be almost identical, like I said, but they are coming up a couple new colors, it looks like. Uh, there's going to be a bronze color and I believe a pink or a graphite and uh, yeah, a pink shade color too. So for those who like pink, you will have that option as well for colors. I seem to always buy the, the, the new color that comes out. So I might be interested in that bronze a little bit because I, you know, I've got the Pacific blue. That's the, that's the one uh, that, uh, um, that I, I got for the 12. And then if you remember on the 11, it had that, um, that forest or midnight green, um, and that's so that, that was the that, that was the other unique color. So it seems like each year, of course, they have the usual suspects like the the, the space gray and the, the silver and all that. Uh, so, uh, uh, so but I mean, other than like maybe minor physical differences on the iPhone 13, I don't think you're going to see much uh, in the way of any differences uh, other than they may uh, bump up uh, they may bump up the speed just a smidge. Now they're all ta also talking about this this. Uh, 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 this thing called uh, ProMotion display, which would put it 
from what's, uh, again, we're not getting too terribly technical, it's 60 hertz versus 120 hertz. And what that's going to do is give you a much faster action on, on, on the screen. So you're going to see things be much as if you're, as far as when graphics pop up and it, the reaction to what the way the screen works, um, it's going to give a, uh, give a, uh, give that a, a good uh, bump as far as the the, uh, the display, making it more pro motion in the pro series. Um, they what they do is they enable in in a, in a uh, it's similar to like a low power mode black plane technology, which will which will facilitate also an always on display. So you'll have that option just like it is on the Apple Watch. We have that always on display, but still uh, uh, being able to handle uh, the battery uh, life okay. Speaking of battery, they are talking about they're going to be putting in larger batteries um, in the uh, in, in all the models. So that in itself, you might want to consider, just for that reason. Um, the uh, if I recall, the 13 uh, Pro Max is probably going to be about 4,600 uh, milliamps or whatever they they call that with uh, the with the uh, the juice, and it's going to, it's going to go uh, probably a little a little a, a, a big bump as far as the capacity of the battery. I, I of those of you who have the the Pro the 12 Pro Max, the battery. Um, the battery capacity is is pretty awesome. I'll get a good a good day, uh, uh, and a full day for a pretty 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 easily in most cases. Um, they will be putting in a faster modem, which will give you some improved speeds with uh, with five uh, G, and have giving you also better five G coverage. I've noticed uh, I'm on T Mobile. The five G coverage has been pretty awesome here in Chicago area, um, and and uh, also. Be, uh, uh, giving you um, amazing uh, connections. I always like oh, I, when I'm near a cell tower. I want to get. I want to uh, when I'm at a stoplight. Of course, uh, I'm sitting. Uh, I'm sitting next to a big tower. I say hey, I want to see what the speed is, and I and I go and run speed tests, and yeah, you're getting uh, two, three, sometimes 500 megabit speeds on on 5G, which is pretty awesome. It's probably faster than some of our home internet that we we currently have. So. Uh, so 5G has really become a really good. It's really getting a lot. Um, it's getting a lot better. Uh, I think T-Mobile of all the carriers is really the, at the forefront of it right now. Um, and I, maybe I'm a little biased because I've been a T-Mobile customer for about three years now, and uh, they uh, they've been very good, uh, very good service, and uh, have been very dependable in most cases. But some of us may not have the good coverage to what to where T-Mobile is. You might be a Verizon customer or an AT&T customer or, or others. Um, and uh, it's so you just, you try it, see how, see how it works. But 5G is, is I think T-Mobile is at the forefront really of where 5G is right now. So, um, uh, and camera technology is probably going to improve a little bit. Uh, you're going to have some, probably some more improved lighting conditions, uh, low light conditions. I think all the photographers out there who are using the, their iPhone camera, that, that alone might be a, a, a worthy reason why you want to may upgrade because if you're a lot, a lot, a lot, if you do a lot of photography in low light, that's probably going to give you uh, some, some better results. Uh, but I know the camera on this, on, on, on this iPhone now is, is, is pretty awesome as it is. So uh, I can't see, um, I, I can't see of, a, of a, any other reason why you would have to upgrade. Um, but some, some may, may want to do that. So um do we have any questions about the iPhone? Um, I can open up to questions until I, when I can, I can move on to the to the next uh, the next item. Okay. Someone's alarm keeps going off. <laughs> um, David, uh, David, I heard ahead. that they uh, were going to be upgrading the video capabilities. Is rumored. That's included with the camera, yes. Yeah. So, so you're going to have some improved video. I forgot to mention that. Yes, thank you. Uh, Improve video and as well as improve fo uh, photo uh, low light. Uh, yes, so they're gonna they're gonna you're gonna see some improvements. It's not drastic and and you know again, again let me think of, I'm gonna move on to something else uh, with, uh, some, uh, with the iPhone here. Um, funny that already they're rumoring about the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 13 <laughs> hasn't even come out yet. And I said this on my podcast last week. Why do these leakers have to start talking about a, a device? that we haven't even released the one that's supposed to come out this week. And they're already start, they're already talking about the iPhone 14, but they're finally, they're getting some rumors of some, uh, of some even more, uh, uh, that, that, that model may uh, have some even more uh, upgrades that, that than what the 13 had, but I don't want to go into that because that's, it's very rumor. I, I try to avoid that. I just I had to mention it on my show because just, just out of the pure, 
uh, humor of it all. It's just you're, you're talking about an, a device is not is, is over a year away before it's going to come out again. So I mean, I, when I start talking about rumors, I wait till about maybe this the six month point when I when we're get we're itching for new products here. So, uh, uh, so which also there also they were rumoring about uh, the fact of maybe possibly having a, a, a touch ID uh, that's on the display similar to what Android phones have. So it'd be actually a touch ID on the, in the glass, but I don't think it was ready for prime time. If for Apple standards, so that that's probably the why the reason why that's probably not going to come out um, for that. So, uh, but yes, you are, you are right. The video is going to be upgraded. Any other questions or comments? All right. Um, Apple Watch, the Apple Watch Series Seven is going to be coming out. Uh, the biggest thing they're saying is uh, is is potential supply constraints, which there's probably going to be supply supply constraints on the iPhone as well. I wouldn't be surprised. They really haven't been saying it, haven't been saying it as much, but um, just just because of components and and the way that the, the Apple Watch is going to be designed. I think the biggest thing that's going to stand out on the Apple Watch is they're talking about it being, you know, it's always been rounded, like 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 all the Apple Watches have been since 2015, that they're going to square it off similar to the way the iPhone is. Um, the other thing they're saying is it's going to probably have a 41 and a 45 millimeter size, so another one millimeter size increase, uh, which would make the display uh, bigger. But I'm hoping that the bands stay. They've, they've been pretty awesome with bands, I must say, because... I had from the series zero all the way up to, I had a series zero and I think I had a series two and then I had the series four and then I moved to the series six. The bands have always worked and that's going over. And Apple is very good at that. And a lot of times with, with that kind of stuff, especially with bands and everybody, I'm sure here ha who have Apple watch have a collection like I do of, of, of the different bands. Although I have I, I love this, this Melanie's this, I'm sorry, this, the, the sport loop band one so much that I, I never change it. I really like it a lot because it's the, it's the fitted one instead of the Velcro. Um, so uh, they're uh, 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 they're they're really not. There wasn't really a lot talking about other than uh, uh, processing design like the S7. Um, looking at potential updates as far as that goes. But I think the biggest thing is it's just going to be what the biggest disappointment, I guess, is going to be is a lot of the health features that people were hoping that that would be in it, like a, like the blood pressure measurement. And then, of course, blood glucose, so which I think the, the blood glucose one is, is a lot a lot harder to, 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 to get in place, especially you're trying to, you know, uh, now we know how when you have to check your blood, it, you, you have to get blood to do it. And, and I, I, I don't even, haven't even seen, or they, they have, they've kept it under wraps, what that technology is going to be. If that, if that were available right now on this new Apple watch, I probably would be a player. I mean, this, this is, this series six is, is great. I mean, it's been good for me. Um, so, but if anybody who's looking to, to upgrades, um, especially if you have a series three or older Apple watch, you know, this is probably going to be a good time to look at upgrading to a new Apple watch. Cause I believe the series three, which is not currently being sold, which is the low end, uh, low end model, uh, other than the, the SE model that's, that's out uh, now, which is this current model, um, is going to probably get discontinued and, and it may not even be supported with the older OSs anymore when watch OS eight comes out. Um, I think watch OS eight will cover the series three at this point, but then going to the future, probably not. So, um, so other than that, there really hasn't been a lot of, um, uh, other th really th no things are notable of the Apple watch. They're, they are going to announce the Apple watch. I think that's the two things I've just talked about right now. I definitely think they're going to announce now, here are a couple, a couple other things that I don't think they're probably going to announce, and that's going to be. I'll go, um, oh, I thought Thomas raising his hand. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, the uh, the AirPods three. Uh, they're going to be. They're saying that there's going to be an update uh, of the the AirPods, uh, the low end models, and then may, I don't know about the pros, uh, but uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see um, if that comes out. I don't. I I think the rumor says that I don't think they're going to announce any AirPods at this event. Uh, and a couple of things I'll be brief on is the iPads. Uh, they, they're rumoring about the iPads, about a, a new Mac iPad mini, a uh, six gen, uh, not, not substantial. I they may not even announce iPads tomorrow on Tuesday because, uh, you know, they like to uh, share that for a different event but with Macs. I'll mention that in a minute as well. Uh, they're also talking about the, 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 the entry level iPad, which is now at a ser the, the eighth gen, uh, Rumors we're seeing, we're swirling, seeing that the stock uh, of of the eighth gen uh, is 
is depleted or it's getting very low or you can't get one. And those, that's the most affordable iPad that's out there, $349 um, or less, depending on if you find a deal. Uh, so they're trying to maybe a ninth gen. There would be some improvements, adding some enhancements to that. But the, the Pro lines in st intact the, for iPad. Um, I love my, I have the M1 iPad Pro um, 11 inch. Uh, so we're good with that. So, um, and then uh, we have uh, uh, iOS 15. So I think we have, I think we got a little bit of time here left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about iOS 15. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen here. Let me uh, pull up my notes here real quick and let's talk about the, uh, let, let's talk about that a little bit here. Uh, let me get to my links here. Here we go. Well, let's get ready for iOS 15 first. I think this this is a good uh, graphic. Uh, this is a good website that, that puts some info in here. I'm gonna share my screen here so you can see it. Uh, right, let's do that. Let me share, come on. So I'm let me share. Oh, there it is. Okay. Do you guys see my share screen okay? Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is this was on ZDNet. I thought this was just a good instead of me reinventing the wheel. Let me just talk through this and give us the good information here. Um, which iPhone is going to get iOS 15? So it's basically an easy way to think of this. It, this breaks it down. Anything from current model all the way down to uh, the SE first gen or the 6S or 6S Plus is the is the low end. So. They're going back a pretty long ways as far as uh, as far as supporting older devices. Now, bear in mind, older devices are probably not going to be able to take care of, take advantage of some of the newer technologies like the live text, uh, share play, that kind of stuff, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, hey, Dave. And that, yes, go ahead. Dave, can you zoom in on that screen a little bit? Yeah, sure. Just because it's you got a lot of. So I got these ads. Yeah. Well, it's just the text is hard to read. Wow. So. How's that? Thanks. Yeah. Um, so there's there's the uh, the i the i the iPhone uh, the model. So rest assured, anybody has any of these models, you'll be fine. Um, and it'll be a worthy update. Again, the lower end models, you may not see some of the features here. Um, and then iPad OS, uh, they tend to cut off iPad a little little uh, lower on the on the line here. So all the pros are still supported. All the pro models, all the way to the first gen. Um, and then you have. Um, uh, all the all the uh, the lower end iPads, which is the eighth gen through the fifth gen. So anything older than that's not going to be covered. Then the the iPad Mini fifth gen and the four will be covered. And then there's the three generations of iPad Air, which is the fourth, third, and uh, the Air iPad Air two. So they haven't been cut off too many this time around. So as far as uh, as far as that goes, uh, uh, is it is it going to be something that uh, that you uh, are going to want to upgrade to, but there are people out there who are still using the older devices and they work perfectly fine. And Apple is actually being great with it. And the fact that if you're running like iOS 13 uh, or iOS 12 on some devices that are, aren't compatible anymore, granted they're, they're, they're getting, they're getting old. Um, you're going to be dealing with, uh, uh, compatibility issues. And a lot of app developers are going to stop supporting the older OSs. So it's probably, if you have a device like that, it might be something to consider with, uh, getting a newer iPad. Um, so one thing Apple's going to do this time, and they've been pretty smart with is the fact that, uh, uh, you can decide whether to upgrade or not. I mean, I know, you, you know, in the past, they've basically th forced it down us that you have to upgrade. You have to upgrade the updates there. You see that, that red number one in, in the, uh, in the settings icon, and it's telling you it's there. Um, you are going to, Apple has said that you're going to have a choice, uh, where they're still a little unclear of how that's going to be presented. So we'll, but we'll see. Uh, but do you, I mean, you still cannot update it. As long, it it's not going to, as long as you don't have automatic updates turned on, you should be fine with that. Um, recommended that it, when, before you do the update is that you, what you want to do is you want to actually um, update the apps and you want to uh, free up some space, make sure that you have a free space. I hope most of us now have devices that have at least 32 gigs of, of, of uh, space, uh, hopefully more, uh, but you, I, you know what you're contending with when you have a device that's got uh, uh, minimal um, uh, minimal uh, space. So 
Other thing that's so important is making sure you're, you're, you're having constant backups. I'm hoping you have iCloud and you, you paid for at least the, uh, the 50 gig plan. So it's, it's storing most of your data that you have. Most of us don't have too much of that. That's a dollar a month through, through, through Apple. Uh, making sure you have iCloud backup running and check, make sure that the backup runs is running. You can run manual backups if you so want to, you, uh, but uh, important to do that. Um, make sure you know the passwords, have your passwords in place and, and be aware of that as well. So that's that's one good thing uh, to, to know about uh, as, far as, uh, as far as that goes. So that's in a nutshell where iOS uh, 15 is as far as the upgrades go. Um, I'll touch upon uh, some of the uh, 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 some of the other things here. Let me uh, have my notes here real quick and look for this year, which was here are some of the features that are going to be missing uh, when iOS 15 launches. Uh, this is on iMore, so uh, share play. Yeah, they talked about SharePlay. What SharePlay is is going to be is, it was a big headliner, if everybody remembers when we watched WWDC. Uh, what it's going to be is it's a, it's a feature that allows you to be able to share music, videos, and even your device screen with other people through FaceTime. So you can have, you can have like a video watching party if you wanted to and be able to share uh, your screen and whatever you're doing and, and be, you know, be remote. So uh, that's what's great about it. Um, they're, it's not ready for prime time. They did pull it out of the out of some of the, the the betas early, and it's not in the current beta right now. So it's uh, it's definitely going to be something that uh, um, uh, that you're going to have to uh, know that's not going to be ready for prime time just yet. Um, the other option that they were talking about was digital ID cards, being able to put your driver's license in securely um, in in Apple Wallet. They're bringing that support, but. There's not very many states. Illinois is nowhere near uh, in the technology realm. It, look how long it took for them to finally be ready for real ID because they had to get that uh, in place for the TSA. But of course, so that all got delayed. So uh, don't anticipate that's going to be uh, something we'll be using anytime soon. But uh, it is a secure way of, of saving your, your ID cards. But you also got to think about if you're for your privacy, if you don't want to if you don't want to share your phone with somebody, especially if law enforcement or somebody, you're, I think a lot of people are still going to keep their their physical ID cards anyway. I mean, you have to anyway. That's not going to change. So, um, the uh, app privacy report. Uh, this is a this was a great report that you could run. That uh, it isn't going to show up right away. It, it gives you an actual report to tell you uh, what apps have been tracking if you allowed them to track. Um, so um, that's not going to be available right away. Um, so. It, it, it will be there eventually, but uh, not going to be there right away. Uh, for, for CarPlay, for those of you who have CarPlay in your car, the Maps app is, is getting some awesome improvements, including some more detailed 3D navigation. And that would be pretty awesome to see on the screen in your, while you're driving. Not going to be ready just yet. Um, so uh, they, um, uh, they are not, that, that, so they're going to be working on that. And then um, uh, Legacy Contacts uh, is a feature that allows you to add contacts who can access your accounts and data with no password required. And, you know, because of someone, and unfortunately, if someone, if you're, if you're death, proof of death, or the Apple ID owner is going to be required to get this information. So it's not like anyone's going to be getting you know, your info while you're uh, still around. So the ability to set these legacy contacts was available in the betas, but they, they it, it's gone. So we're not going to see where that's going to go. And then this is the part, last part, this is part of actually uh, Mac OS um, 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 Monterey, which is coming out, which is called Universal Control. This is also headline of the fact that you're going to be able to have your, your iPad, your app, your, uh, your if you have a MacBook Pro, and if you also have an iMac, and as you see this on the picture, that being able to universal control, be able to seamlessly go between all three devices or two devices if you want to. You've got you got the feature right now called Sidecar. If you want to be able to use an iPad for, on your Mac as a as a display, uh, but the universal control is going to be just a, a seamless feature, being able to go through and uh, and do that. So, um, with the time allotted, I you know there's going to be there's so much stuff going on with iOS 15. Uh, we're going to have to go through it uh, at another time once once it's out out in the wild. And uh, uh, but I'm open to questions here uh, for anything uh, related to what I just talked about um, before we uh, I wrap up and uh, we uh, have Mr. Mike Potter talk to us about Mac stock. Any questions? I've got one question, Dave. 
What's sure. going to happen to the iPhone SIG after you retire from that position? Um, I don't know. We're going to have to uh, look to find a new leader for that as well. Um, um, so we're hoping uh, we can find somebody that has uh, has the time to be able to do it and has uh, uh, the interest in doing it as well. So. Any other questions? I got a question about uh, if you ran the betas of iOS, you did. So what did you think about all the changes to Safari? Because I've been reading it. Yeah, thank you. That, yeah, I forgot to bring that up. Yeah. Well, good thing is they changed it back. <laughs> Biggest complaint of all was the fact that they were putting the, um, uh, the, 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 the URL, the, the search bar at the bottom of your screen, which is crazy. We're all so used to on an iPhone, we're looking at the top of the screen, right? Well, you can go in, it, it's going to have the features if you want it. So, and of course, they're, I, I sure hope they don't put it as default, but I think they're going to. But you have, you'll have to go into the settings and actually change it. So then it'll move the bar back up where it was and makes the make Safari look just like it has with the, the, the URL bar uh, in place. So, well, there was also some talk about like, Differing toolbars and floating things, and this seems to be the way they're going. And how did that? How did you feel that worked? Um, the floating bars, I kind of like them because they're floating in an area where you can get something real easily. Because instead of always having to go to the next window and, and opening it, you know, the tab browsing is changing a little bit too. And of course, it's changing on the Mac big time uh, in Safari. Um, so I didn't mind it, uh, but some people may not like it. And I mean, I, but I think. The, at least the good thing is uh, Apple listened to all the complaints during the, during the beta process that they allow you to put that back. So it was pretty easy to figure out, you know, learnability. One of the things I'm discovering on, I'm running the beta of on my iPad and okay. boy, it's crazy. I mean, there's, there's a lot of differences on the iPad. I haven't put yeah. it on the phone, so I don't know. Is it as different on the phone or are the changes more subtle? A little more subtle. I think the iPad, they did make a lot of more changes to it. I agree with you. I know Bob. If you have any comments on that, I know you. I, I am I am confused daily on my iPad running iOS yeah. 15. I just put Safari. it on my main one. To be so. to be perfectly honest, like and and they're pushing this whole tab thing, and I'm still a bookmarks guy, so I've got all the bookmarks, and it's just it. And on the iPhone, it it's okay, but they still are defaulting it. To being at the bottom and you have to switch it to move it back up at the top now they may change a lot of this we got we got more betas coming i'm sure um so i'm not uh, i don't say yeah. i'm uncomfortable with it but it's confusing and it's going to be confusing to users yeah i agree um all right as um and we'll see yeah the, when he means the betas the betas will probably be released after ios 15 um iOS 15 is uh, released. So well, I, and, I'm a little I'm a little concerned that they'll do the same thing. Is that they'll go production, you know, within days. That's of, what I was saying of Tuesday, and there's going to be more betas. You know, 15.12, you right. know, that sort of thing. So, but yeah, for us common mortals, I think it's probably best to wait. <laughs> yeah, don't. I I would say wait for the first production release because then they'll yeah. they'll definitely give us a of you know a lockdown view of what they want before people's brains explode. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, it's sort of funny. As of today, we're on beta eight. Um, I would not be surprised by Monday, we get either a release candidate, at least probably at least a recent, what's called a release candidate, meaning that it's, it's near ready for public consumption. And then the announcement will happen Tuesday and it happened last year. And it wasn't like Wednesday, they had the gold master, which is that's. Oh that's yeah. The, Freaked all the developers out. Developers yeah. are going crazy. And then that Friday, and I'm assuming that we're probably going to see pre-orders for the iPhone on Friday. I would not be all surprised. So. Yeah. I, I, the, I think the key to the beta, the key to the beta versus quote production will be uh, when you can place an order when, when iPhones will be in people's hands. Um, I think that'll be the, the key. If we have a little time there, then they'll give us a little more, a little more time to, to mess with it. Overall, yeah. the, the betas have stabilized pretty good. Six, six, seven, and eight have been pretty good. Um, I have a couple of odd things with the watch beta, but, and the, and then, and the phone beta, but again, let's, let's just wait and see what they do. Absolutely. So. All right. Unless anybody has any other questions, uh, Mike Potter, 
how are you? Uh, we're going to let you uh, speak with us. There he is with a smiley face. And then appreciate you coming here. I'm, uh, I'll, I'll introduce Mike. Uh, Mike Potter is uh, has been doing a podcast for Mac Eyes Only for a long time. Over uh, was it uh, ten years, fifteen years? Is it fifteen? Uh, fifteen years at least. Yep. And uh, ish. Uh, ish, yeah. <laughs> uh, been in the Apple community for a long time, um, and uh, we we kind of met on a whim uh, back when Mac stock started in 2015, and uh, uh, became fast friends. And we've and I've been part of uh, Mac stock ever since, and love love Mac stock, and, and I'm so excited that uh, you are here uh, to tell tell us about what's going on with Mac stock. I know this pandemic has put a lot of uh, harsh hard things to do here in the uh, in this world, but uh, I think you've we overcome it. As uh, as I'm wearing the 2020 uh, shirt here. The, to commemorate last year and uh, yeah, you got the memo. You, know, yeah, you got so the memo. Yeah. So we, we both we both are wearing it today. So, uh, but go ahead, Mike. Take take it away and uh, tell everybody about MaxSock and what's going on with MaxSock. Well, first I have to say I'm impressed by the changes the ASA has made to the meeting room. Um, <laughs> I I love that everybody has their own pods now. This is just amazing. You know, you can set it up to be mountain views or you know family rooms or whatever. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, well, well worth the, you know, any rent you spent on that place. Yes. Um, also, you know, you guys said this at the beginning of the meeting or a little bit after the beginning of the meeting, but I did want to thank Dave too, for all of his years um, as president of SCAU. Uh, I know he's put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this group. And um, I, I've seen a lot of it firsthand, uh, talked to him a lot about it on the, on the phone and stuff. And uh, he really loves this group. And I, personally, I'm excited to see what the next phase of this group is. So um, I'll be I'll be watching to see how you guys continue to expand and grow over the next few years. Thanks. Um, so MacStock, speaking of expanding and growing, um, <laughs> MacStock has been on a little bit of a, uh, a, a shrink the last couple of years uh, with COVID. Uh, we've all been affected by it, uh, and MacStock has too, and. Um, <clears throat> oh, thank you. You just put me put me I right at, right in my you. face there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mike. Um, so um, yeah, it it you know we've had we've had some issues, and last year we tried a virtual Mac stock, which actually I think was a lot of fun. Um, I ran it uh, uh, by by myself from my my uh, green screen in my office. Uh, Dave joined in as co-host and kind of took control of the Q and A and uh, kind of. Um, taking the lead on wrangling speakers for me uh, last year. And that was a huge, huge help. It couldn't, it couldn't have happened without his help. And of course, uh, the help of all the presenters who put the time into either creating a present, a standalone presentation or uh, sat down with me for an interview style talk that we presented last year. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, this year when things were starting to uh, kind of trend upward, since I had to uh, cancel or postpone, I should say, I like to use the word postpone, since I had to postpone MacStoc again for another year um, and announce that, I think it, back in February, I announced that. I had the idea to, to maybe do something a little hyper-local, uh, something that uh, would be small and easily managed and, and we can put you know, proper mitigations in place uh, where possible. And as things uh, started to trend in a, in a positive way, I felt confident announcing that we could do a small uh, kind of, I was calling it a VIP pass for just a, you know, a, a little group of people. So I purposely rented a small venue in Woodstock. It's called the Stage Left Cafe. Um, they can, I think Daniel, the executive director, he told me, they can technically host 100 people in there. He said, but try to keep it to 75. I said, you know what? I'll keep it to 60. <laughs> we'll keep it even smaller than that. And um, yeah, things have changed. It seemed like almost, almost weekly for about a month there, I was changing the rules and everybody. And I felt bad about that because every week I had to announce new rule changes, new mitigations to put in place. And ultimately where we're at right now is we have room for about 25 people total instead of the 60. And uh, that allows everyone to spread out. Um, uh, we did institute a vaccine requirement. So everyone has to show proof of vaccination to, to come to it. 
And then also, of course, Illinois just reinstituted a mask mandate for indoor uh, gatherings. So we have that as well. Um, and so I just, it, it seemed like every week I was just cutting it back and cutting it back. But the 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 thing that makes this a little bit different, that that's kind of a bummer. I didn't mean to be a bummer. That's not a bummer. It's still fun. It's still going to be fun because there's still that virtual aspect. Anyone in the world who wants to attend virtual Max Talk can uh, at no charge. Uh, you just come to uh, Max Talk Conference and Expo.com, go to the virtual Max Talk page, and you can sign up completely free. And uh, what we're going to be doing is not a Zoom meeting. Uh, it's going to be a live stream. And I'll be feeding the speaker presentations. Almost all the presenters are also virtual themselves. Um, one is tentative on coming down. He's uh, within about 45 minutes of where Max Doc is. So he he's thinking he might come down and that's Mike Schmitz. Um, but uh, all, all the other presenters are virtual as well. So even if you sign up for virtual, you're not not alone. <laughs> Almost everybody, the vast majority of folks who are attending are going to be virtual. Um, and it's a single day event, 11 a.m. to 4 on Saturday, September 25th. Uh, and, and just like last year, I think it's going to be a lot of fun because we're going to have a chat room in uh, the plan is in Discord. Uh, there's going to be the chat chat room in YouTube as well for anyone who wants to use it. And then if anyone took part in the kind of spatial audio avatar based uh, rooms that we had last year, I found a service that's very, very similar. I think they even use this. I think they're licensing the technology. Uh, very, very similar little, uh, where we can set up these meeting rooms. I have a dozen meeting rooms set up, each that can handle up to 30 people. And uh, the cool thing about it is unlike last year, in addition to the audio, there's also video. So the camera from your Mac or your phone or your iPad or whatnot is gonna capture your video if you want it to. And uh, you can wander around and, and you can actually see each other while you're talking uh, to the others in the room. So that's that's going to be a lot of fun, too. Uh, so, um, yeah, that, we, we've got some things planned for virtual Mac stock this year. Um, six speakers, as I said, um, we have Brett Terpstra. He's going to be talking about um, automation with his own app, which is called Bunch. Um, and then we have Rick Cartwright. Uh, Rick put together a really cool presentation. I enjoyed it a lot when he sent it to me. Um, it's about using the iPhone in nature and the types of apps you can use to investigate the world around you. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and he actually filmed it out in a nature preserve near his home. Uh, let's see, Wally Cherwinski is going to be joining me for a talk about uh, revisiting multicam um, and how he helped a band go virtual in the past year, which was really cool. Uh, Kelly Gamont is kind of holding the cards close to her chest on her talk, um, <laughs> but uh, he, she wants to talk about, uh, she wants to stick with the theme of play, which is gonna be the theme of Max Doc 2022. Um, she wants to stick with the theme of play and talk about how uh, analog or offline breaks can, can be really good for your brain and, and that you need them. And so she wants to talk a little bit about that and use that as kind of a lead in for her, her more formal talk at Max Doc when we get together in person the next time. Uh, Mike Schmitz, I mentioned, he's definitely keeping his cards close to his chest. He, he's not told me what he's going to talk about yet, and that makes me a little nervous. That's uh, Mike. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's Mike. Yeah, it, it's going to be good, though. Every, every talk he ever does is always excellent, and, and folks really get a lot uh, from that. And then... Um, <sighs> Folks seem to really love automation, and Allison uh, Sheridan said that she also wanted to do a talk on her adventures getting started with automation, and that's going to be another interview-style talk with me that we're going to be recording this, this upcoming week, and uh, I said, you know what, that's awesome. Uh, having two talks on automation is not a bad thing because they seem to go over really, really well every time we have an in-person Max talk. So uh, those are the six speakers. That's how we're kind of organized. Uh, it's going to be on September 25th. And I, actually, I know a lot of you have already signed up. Um, I, I hesitate. You know, I have really strict privacy policies with Max Talk, so I hesitate to name any names. But there's a couple of you I can see in this meeting right now who are actually uh, going to be there in person. And then uh, a bunch of you I know have registered for a virtual pass already. And then, of course, all the, the names of folks I recognize who've been to Max Talk in person. I just wanted to thank 
all of you so much for supporting MaxDoc and making it the successful event that it is. Great. Um, I don't know. You had said you had some questions, Dave. So I thought I'd just kind of ramble through everything really quickly. <laughs> and if I went over anything too quickly, no. you guys let me know. But um, yeah, you said you had some questions too, and I'm happy to answer them if I can. Anybody have any questions about the next doc? And I did put the link to how to register if you haven't already registered uh, in the chat. Well, hey, Dave, can I say something real quick? Yeah. I, I just, I, I want to be, yeah, I just, I want to be, oh, hold on a sec. Here you go. Um, hey, I just want to be really, really clear with everybody um, in the meeting today. We are oh, yes. canceling our meeting which was originally scheduled for the 25th to support Mac stock. So I Thank would you. encourage all of you that were going to be part of our meeting on the 25th, sign up for Mac stock and participate there instead. So we yes. wanted to give Mike and the team as much opportunity to get our participation as possible. So there wasn't any competition. Oh, thanks Davis. That's really awesome. And you know, you mentioned the team. I, I absolutely completely glossed over the fact that Dave of course is going to be co-hosting it with me again this year. And uh, we also have a couple other special guests who are coming in uh, specifically to join us. Chuck Joyner is coming in to join us. And um, let's see who do, oh, Guy Searle, Guy Searle. So how, how could you forget Guy? <laughs> I, how could I forget Guy? You know, I'm 6'3", he towers over me. I don't know how I could forget him. All of us. The guy is coming in, uh, uh, Chuck is coming in, uh, uh, Chuck's partner, Cindy is coming in. Cindy has just been an amazing volunteer at MaxDoc every single year. Yes. She's uh, wonderful. And, yeah, she's wonderful. And they're both coming in. Um, so uh, I do not, I see someone is asking, uh, uh, Tom is asking about a schedule. Um, I don't have the order of the talks um, completely laid out yet. Uh, and part of that is because I want to make sure that the presenters can join us in, and this is one of the things I'm doing this weekend is reaching out to everybody, uh, make sure they can join us live. So in addition to the recorded talks, they are going to be joining us live. I've kind of carved out the end of the day for Q&A, but certainly there'll be time throughout the day as well for Q&A. So I wanna make sure um, when each one can join us because they are all in different time zones. And um, once I know for sure what time they can join in, that I'll, I'll have a more final schedule. But those are the, the six folks who are, are planning on presenting. And um, <laughs> as long as they get me their recordings, as long as they get uh, me the recordings, then then we'll be able to get them shown. I'm sorry, I was laughing. I'm not what you were saying, but Frank Petrie in the chat said, will there be lunch? <laughs> there will be, for folks who are there in person, there will be lunch. And then yeah. uh, as a little extra activity for anyone who who's made the trek in, you know, and, and signed up for one of the in-person things, I'm kind of putting together, um, I, I have reservations for outdoor dining at a restaurant in Woodstock that's literally a half a block from where MaxDoc is going to be. And then, uh, so anyone who'd like to kind of, it's kind of an a la carte option, if you will. Um, it's not really included in the ticket, but anyone who'd like to join in for the dinner can, can absolutely join in. I made reservations for 15 to 20 people, so we have plenty of room. Um, and then for Sunday, a little extra for folks who've traveled in from outside the area, I thought it might be fun to have a MaxDoc picnic. So again, an outdoor activity for folks who who you know come in for an in-person ticket, uh, and and they're in the area before they have to run out to O'Hare or Midway or whatever to catch their flight. I thought, yeah, why don't we gather for for a little picnic? Also an outdoor activity, um, so that we can help you know mitigate things and keep everybody safe. So um, that's 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 kind of the plan. Mike, uh, <clears throat> quick question: Are we going to have films? Uh, I am recording everything. The plan no, no, is I mean uh, the, the the film festival. Film festival, yes. Like, oh, film festival. Well, Wally and I are going to be talking about that. The film festival is kind of Wally's baby, if you remember. Uh, if, yeah, you, right. if, if you saw the film festival in 2019, uh, that was Wally's idea. I let him run with it. And we couldn't actually, we, we've not been able to have a, a second second annual film festival yet because we haven't had the in-person Mac stock. So uh, we, one of the things we're going to be talking about when I chat with Wally this week in our, our recorded interview is um, the, the next film festival, which will be at the next in-person Mac stock. So there will be another film festival, just not at virtual Mac stock. 
Hey, did you get yeah. my uh, my video, the one I sent him, called uh, The Rookie Newsman? Um, I don't remember seeing The Rookie Newsman. Uh, oh. Did you send it to... I thought, well, I thought before we knew that 2020 wasn't going to exist. It <laughs> <That> seems <laughs> so long ago now, doesn't it? I know. I mean, it was August uh, when, when I showed my uh, uh, The Shortest Horror Film Ever Made uh, video. I saw that. I remember seeing that one. Yeah, but uh, and yeah. then I sent the other one in for that. And then we had, you know, registration and stuff. And then you were saying, okay, if you did that, and then 2021 will be okay. Blah blah blah, and but I thought that uh, the rookie newsman is what I sent in for that. The, I'll send you another copy. Well, the film festival submissions will be um, next year anyway. So the, yeah, be next year anyway. They go to they go to Wally directly, and then oh, okay. he, he he reviews them and shares them to me. So if he he hasn't shared it with me, then I haven't seen it yet. But that doesn't mean I I can't get it. If I know that you submitted it, I can. Hey, look, I run the website. I can get to it if I want. To. <laughs> That's right. Um, so. <laughs> uh yeah if if you've um submitted it and you have a link to it i'm certain i can get to it i now i want to see it but yeah wally is the one who gets them first uh not me yeah i i specialize in amateur looking films <laughs> That's I right. specialize. It's not to look professional let me tell you I, I i i specialize in amateur production of uh, uh apple conferences <laughs> Uh, you do a very professional job, though. <laughs> well, he he sure you. does. <laughs> so I have I'm a quick question. Um, hey, and uh, if you're not Zooming, uh, what are you using? Uh, we'll be streaming live to YouTube. To YouTube. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, yep. Last, last, uh, well, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to talk about Facebook. Um, yeah, we'll be <laughs> streaming live to uh, YouTube. So there will be the YouTube chat room. So if you go to the, you know, um, I'll be sending the link to go direct to that channel, to that vit, you know, to the live stream, uh, because it, it won't be available to the general public. Just folks who signed up, will will get to it. Um, so I'll be sending the link direct to it, to everyone who signed up. Uh, so you'll have that there'll be a chat room in there. And then I'll also send information on signing up for the Discord uh, chat room if you if you care to join in there. So there'll be a few different ways that you can and can participate. Let, let everybody you. know what let everybody know what Discord is because some people may not know what that is. Discord is like um, how, how should I describe it? It's like Slack for gamers, um, but more and more people have have taken it up and started using it for things like. Uh, gatherings and family events and things like that. Um, it can be used for audio. Uh, my intention is to only have it available really for uh, text type chatting. So um, I, I don't really anticipate anybody. In fact, I don't even think I have the audio component turned on in what I've been <laughs> setting up. Um, but it'll be mostly just a place where you can come in and uh, there are little, little um, think of them as little rooms set aside for people to ask questions if they want to. Uh, there'll be a room set aside for me to interact with uh, presenters if they, they care for me to interact with them in there. And then um, I think I had another room set up too. But Q&A is the main thing in there so that if you have a question, you can ask it in there and then Dave or I will catch it and we'll be able to ask any yeah. of the presenters who are joining us live that question. And that's included in the free pass, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. So if you why want to talk, not? Oh, uh, uh, why not? You, uh, Click. Okay. So, uh, why not um, use Zoom? Um, one, <laughs> it, it, it it would be too unwieldy for one, uh, yeah. especially for trying to record that aspect of it. Um, yeah. Okay. I think YouTube's, YouTube's a good choice because it's it, it's yeah, it's live it, streaming and you have you have full control of it. it. I'm trying to replicate. Let's see. I hadn't really thought about this answer, Frank. I'm trying to replicate the experience of MacStack. So, uh, and that might sound a little weird, but I'm trying to replicate the experience. So that's kind of a uh, one to many type experience where we have a presenter on stage uh, in the past who was at MCC and we, you know the rest of us myself included are in the audience listening to their talk and and uh, absorbing what they have to say and then after the talk we can interact with them whether it's uh, the 
in the hallway track, you know, out in the hall, whether it's uh, in between talks, there are those opportunities to interact with people. And that's kind of what this uh, spatial audio room is for. It's kind of what the chat rooms are for. Uh, people can hang out where they're comfortable and and continue to to chat with a presenter, or chat with each other for as long or as little as you want to, um, but it won't interrupt the flow of the presentations throughout the day, if if that makes sense. So it's kind of yeah. it's kind of yeah. replicating that that feel. Sounds good. And allows me to to stay on schedule as best I can. Which, yeah. if you've been to any Max Doc since 2015 or even virtual Max Doc last year, you know that I have a really hard time doing that. Awesome. So, as, as, anything that can help me stay on schedule is, that, is welcome. right that's, in my that, book. That, that's why you have help with us and, and others that's are coming, right. So, oh, Dave is Dave. Dave for years has been the person who keeps me on schedule. In fact, last year for <laughs> virtual Max Doc, he's like, "When are you going to send out the announcement? When are you going to do this?" <laughs> And then, and then, and then, like when we record a podcast, like these reaction time podcasts, we, we, <laughs> Gary and I, or Eric and I, will be talking about something, and like, okay, they moved on. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the the, uh, the next tiers up. And you, you talked about the VIP, but you, you also have that digital pass available for anybody who wants to be able to watch the videos later. There is a digital pass available. Uh, that's kind of, that's something I started a few years ago with um, MaxDoc, uh, the the two day MaxDoc, where we record all the talks and folks wanted to be able to watch them on their own time or watch them again or watch them many times, and um, they need to be hosted somewhere. There is a cost to hosting them. Uh, they're big <laughs> videos, yeah. and so um, I created the digital pass as a way to. Um, uh, provide a means for people to uh, to do exactly that, to time shift the talks. If they were out chatting with somebody and they missed a talk, they can go back and catch it later. And we did that with virtual Max Doc last year. We created a, a digital pass for it. And there's another one again this year. So if you can't make it on the 25th, if you want to rewatch a particular talk, and they will be a, the, the vast majority uh, except for Allison's and Wally's, the vast majority are going to be more traditional type talks, whereas last year they were more interview style. Um, but this year, the vast majority are going to be more traditional talks. And so if you wanted to catch one again, or if you missed one, or whatever, whatever reason you want to watch it again, you can, if you like, uh, also purchase a digital pass, and that would allow you to watch it That'll be added to your account on the Max Talk website. You can watch it as many times as you want to forever. There's no time limit on it other than uh, my my own expiration, I guess. <laughs> that would be the only time limit on it. <laughs> or I should say Max Talk's own, because I don't want to talk about my expiration. Max Talk's expiration <laughs> would be the only time limit on it. And I, I don't see that happening for the foreseeable future. Um, anyone, uh, for the couple of you who purchased an in-person ticket, you get a digital pass. It's part of the in-person ticket. So it's not a separate purchase. Um, but if you attended virtually and after the fact, even you decide you want to go back and watch anything, there is that digital pass available. So Great. thanks, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, and then, and, and again, just not to just to repeat it, the VIP pass is going to uh, give you the option uh, to come see us in person. So all three of those passes are there. Um, and you do get a t-shirt. So he, he did, he did send, he did send that sneak peek of the P, of the t-shirt and you threw me off when you put the big question mark on the, on the logo. And, and, and I, I shared it. I know you hate Facebook, but we have a, we have a fans page there. I shared the picture to everybody. And they were like, Oh, right away. They knew it was from the Riddler and <laughs> the question mark on the, on the shirt. So. I, I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. I, I, I put that question mark on there and I immediately felt like the Riddler. The Frank Gorshin Riddler. Now it has, Gorshin, to be the yes. Frank, it has to be the Frank Gorshin, not the Jim Carrey Riddler. It has to be the Frank Gorshin Riddler. That's the only real Riddler out there. Let's be honest. That's true. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you do get a t-shirt. I, you know, I'll tell you, it, creating a t-shirt is probably one of the favorite. Okay. I love seeing everybody. I love everything about Max Doc, but I really enjoy creating the t-shirts every year. It's so much fun. And uh, this year, uh, the last four days, I, I spent a lot of time <laughs> tweaking <laughs> the final design of it. So like there was, there was something off balance about it and I couldn't figure out what was off balance about it. And, and I, I made one little change. I'm like, oh, that's it. 
that's it. And so I took it out to Tim, the guy who does my shirts. I took it out to him. I said, all right, Tim, you know, every year, every year I test the limits of your, your, um, uh, frustration with me by getting you these things in the last minute. I said, so less than two weeks from now, I need these three shirts. Can you do it? <laughs> he said, yeah. So the plan is to have the t-shirts in time for virtual max stock, but I do enjoy making them every year. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a bit of a play on this one. Um, except, uh, I think I mentioned this to you, Dave, the, the Mac doesn't have a mask this year because it's been vaccinated. Oh, right. That's awesome. So, yeah. We got yeah. the mask here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So no mask this year. Uh, any other questions about Mac stock? Any questions in general to Mike? Uh, we have, we have just the remaining minutes here. Uh, uh, please do feel free to open up your mic and ask. And this is my Disney World mug. That's my other big love. Apple yes. and Disney World. Disney. I, I, I did want to say something. I, I really appreciate you you doing this. It's it's like it's like I think the big event in the Mac world, and it's it's just wonderful. <laughs> um, sadly, I have paid for all of them, but something comes up so many times, and I <laughs> the ones I've missed, I I'm just devastated. Um, and alas, I have a VIP ticket. And my irresponsible, inconsiderate nephew has decided to get married. Oh, How dare he? Oh, so I, although I have a VIP ticket, I, which I, I won't actually be there. I don't need money back or anything. But if somebody else wants to, if you want to get another ticket, you can. <sighs> well, I, yeah, I, I would give you a refund if you want one time. No, don't, um, I don't need to uh, put, put in the max stock fund. Well, you you still get your T-shirt. I'll mail you your T-shirt. I want the T-shirt. You'll still get a digital yeah. pass. I will gotta, not gotta mail your collection. I will not <laughs> mail you your lunch, though. That's <laughs> I draw the limit at that. Um, I've tried it. It gets messy. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that. But uh, thank you. I mean, that's that's okay. awesome of you. But if okay. you if you do, you know, let me know. We, we'll talk. We'll talk offline. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Take you're care. awesome. You're awesome. Thanks. <laughs> and anybody awesome. else? Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, one quick Frank. thing. I saw your hand going up. Sorry. Uh, I, I missed the first part about the masks. Uh, if you go to the Max stock event, what's the rules? Uh, masks are required. Um, <laughs> the The state of Illinois does require masks indoors now. Uh, that began April or April, August 30th. Um, and so uh, prior to that, uh, with everyone being fully vaccinated, I wasn't mandating them, um, but I was recommending them. I was strongly recommending that people wear them. Um, but uh, of course, I did have to include that. And I was hoping that presenters would be able to, uh, and uh, that would be myself and Mike, who was coming in we'd be able to take them off for our presentations and then put them back on again. But uh, the venue has said, no, they need to be on the whole time. So I'll be masked and Mike will be masked and everybody else will be too. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, well, that's the yeah. unfortunate, unfortunate part of uh, this whole pandemic. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> I got vaccinated against my well, will, but- uh, That's another story. You know, happy life, happy life. <laughs> Happy all right. Uh, any anybody else? All right. Thanks so much, Mike. Really appreciate it. I hope everybody. I hope you. I hope we hope that we see you everybody at Maxdot virtually. Uh, please sign up and uh, check it out. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and we'll uh, throw it back over to Jeff. Thank all you. right. Thanks, Dave. Uh, thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mike, uh, for that introduction of Maxdot. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I just signed up with with Dave putting the link out there, so I'm now signed up. And uh, That's awesome, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed them in the past. Um, okay, let's. Uh, I want to do a brief uh, coming soon uh, before we get started with the afterglow. So uh, coming soon, uh, the next uh, meeting we will have a photo sig meeting next week Wednesday, September fifteenth at seven p.m. Uh, it is a Zoom meeting. Uh, Jerry Hug will be presenting, uh, uh, talking about the ever expanding uh, editing capabilities in Apple's native camera app. And uh, 
that's uh, there's so much that you can do in there, and, and we expect there to be even more being announced uh, this Tuesday, hopefully. And hopefully he'll have enough time to digest that and maybe do a little presentation on added uh, capabilities. Um, the next main meeting, which was scheduled for September 25th, uh, is now being shifted over to uh, uh, MaxDoc. So uh, there will be no main meeting on September 25th, but we hope that uh, most club members will take that time and, and uh, attend MaxDoc and uh, learn that's all to be taught there. So uh, it's always a great presentation. So if you haven't, haven't gone to a MaxDoc, you haven't seen the virtual one last year, I suggest that you uh, take the time on the 25th and uh, attend uh, MaxDoc. It's uh, very good presentations and, and good talks. Uh, following that, uh, on October 8th, I'm sorry, October 6th at 7 p.m., uh, that will be uh, the technology SIG meeting. So add that to your calendar and make sure you attend that. Uh, Probably we'll have a lot of discussions talking about the new uh, operating systems and, and the capabilities for all the devices. And uh, then of course, uh, October 23rd, I'm sorry, October 9th, we will have a main meeting and uh, uh, we're yet to determine who's gonna be presenting at that, but uh, uh, keep that on your calendar. And then October 23rd, uh, the main meeting, which we will have a standard main meeting, but part of that main meeting will also be uh, the club's elections. So uh, please uh, add that to your calendar and, and attend that one too. Um, other than that, let's, uh, let's all unmute and let's open up for the afterglow. And Mike, we hope you can, you can hang out for this and uh, 